So first of all, darling, can you tell us where we are? We are in um, Emirates, Emirates Palace. Are we in Abracadabra, is it? Abu Dhabi. Abu, Abu Dhabi. <laughs> so we're in Abu Dhabi, which is... Um, which is one of the seven, seven Emirates. Seven Emirates. Now, we've just arrived and we've been outside. We were looking at the beautiful views and we had a little bit of a malfunction. What happened? Oh, the sun here is so brutal. It's so hot. If you spend more than a minute outside, your makeup starts melting, gets into your eyes. So <laughs> that was pretty good, pretty brutal. And I, on the way back, I had to actually hold your hand because I could not see anything. I was, I got blind. So it's lucky that we found a nice man that could point out the bathroom to us. Yep. Um, we managed to get in the bathroom and you've been in the last 15 the, minutes in the bathroom. Uh, gosh, I, yeah, I could not believe how good the bathroom is. <laughs> <laughs> that's like, that's the best thing I've ever seen. Yes, well I was actually going to suggest that we perhaps talk to them and see if they don't mind renting out one of the stalls and we could perhaps stay there tonight. You know, I took pictures of the bathroom. I don't take uh, lots oh, of pictures oh, of the bathroom. Oh, okay, ever, right, right, cut, cut, cut. I, I think, yeah, that's, that's quite enough. Inside the Emirates Palace, it's uh, something to behold. Very, very impressive. Uh, of course, when we were in Greece, we saw a lot of marble because that's where it comes from. But um, man, I don't know if even Greece could compete with this amount of marble. It looks like it's um, at least partially a hotel. The carpets are so new you can smell them. So I'm not sure how often they replace them. But anyway, we'll continue to look around. We probably can't go into people's hotel rooms. That might be a little bit, well, I was gonna say weird, but we did just take photos of a bathroom. <coughs> just spoken to the gentleman who assisted us in uh, finding the bathroom in a hurry because we had a face full of melted makeup and uh, explains that yes it's all open to the public we can walk around and have a good look around and he recommended that we go and buy a cup of coffee and the coffee's kind of special because they put real gold in it and, um, and straight away we thought well I'm not sure why you'd want to drink gold but if that's your thing we asked how much they were and he said oh it's not expensive just $25, so that would be $25 US for a cup of coffee. And then I thought, well, there are places in Sydney that charge that much for a uh, cardboard cup. But uh, yes, it's quite spectacular. We've got shops over here, so I'm sure we'll be checking those out and seeing all the things that we'd be crazy to pay for. Um, judging by some of the people getting their photos in here. I'd say there's a fair bit of uh, perhaps Instagramming going along. Uh, people just taking the opportunity to look like they're mega rich and famous on Instagram. We make no pretense. We're not rich or famous.
Darren, I found what I want for Christmas. Oh, really? What have we found, Darren? Uh, well, a lot of interesting, uh, shiny, blingy things. Any of this will do. Any of this will any, do? Any, any. I'm not that fussy. But Darren, what, any, any of this. But what purpose does it serve? Uh, just shiny and beautiful, make me looking even more beautiful. Oh, Darren, none of this stuff here could make you look any more beautiful. Oh, sure it will. There's only so much beautiful one woman can have. And you've yeah. got it all. You can never be more beautiful. I'm starting to get a feel for the inspiration for the decor in Harrods now, in Harrods in London. Um, I think that's owned by Dodie, Dodie, somebody. And uh, I'd say that they've all got the same sort of taste and idea on how to decorate. I mean, look at these cakes. They look like they're too good to eat. Uh, they're all on display. I look like you should perhaps wear them as jewellery. What do we got prices wise? AED 30. Yeah, I'll just have to work that out. But I think it's about $12 for a cake. Hmm. So, I guess that's how you keep your gelato fresh. Restaurant with a view. And I just went outside and because of the cool air, she not only fogged my glasses as soon as she opened that door, but she's clearly fogged her lens as well. So I think she'll be back in in a second. Darling, where, where are you? I, that's a terrible fog that's just come through. And that's the view when you come outside. Beautiful beach, beautiful water, no shortage of boats. And if you ever wonder where that gold goes from, that uh, the people dig up, a lot of it ends up on the wall in the Emirates Palace. So it's uh, 41 degrees outside. Uh, a lot of people are really struggling with it. I've heard a few people going, oh, it's stifling, I'm gonna fall apart. Um, I mean, on the Gold Coast where I live, we get 41 degree days, not too many of them, a couple every year. And we always blame it on global warming. But uh, that's the, the reason why we need have any outdoor scenes there are no people everybody's inside in the air conditioning yes it's amazing what architects can come up with if you give them a piece of paper and tell them money's no object this place is amazing It'd be nice if the whole world was rich enough to be able to employ architects like this it's what they can create it's pretty pretty spectacular Camels, camels, camels. Even in the Emirates Palace, jewellery shop. There's a 50% off sale. Eat your heart out, Michael Hill. So we're inside the Louvre Museum, but not the French one, not Paris, but in Abu Dhabi. So we're just going to have a quick look at some of their goodies. Oh, looks like we found some ancient gold goodies. Don't know where they're from though. Oh, hang on, I found the sign. Turns out they're from almost everywhere. We got one of them from Lebanon, and we got one from the Philippines, 
And the other one is from Peru. That pretty much covers quite a few corners of the world. But uh, if it's made of gold, you're going to end up here in the Abu Dhabi Louvre. And these items are from Fiji, from France, and from China. But they all serve the same purpose. Funerary jars. I'd say that's where your ashes are. Three things, all similar, from India and two from China. I think maybe the theme here is that similar items can be produced in different parts of the world throughout history. These are, we've got one in 1640, one in 1560, and the other one around 1750. Yes, I'd say it's definitely a theme. Three blue plates, but uh, again from different places. One's from Turkey, the other one's from Italy, and the other one's from China. And we've got three different praying themed figurines. The one on the left is from Gabon, around about 1900. The one in the middle is from Iraq, and that one's two and a half thousand to, yeah, two and a half thousand years old. And the kneeling fellow is from Egypt, and he's about 300 BC. Libya, China and France, all vastly different times, starting from 275, the Libyan one, all the way up to 1907. Three hand axes from different parts of the world. Going back, the oldest one is 500,000 BC. We've got France, Libya, and Algeria. All very similar, obviously made in a very similar way. It's amazing that people all over the globe can come up with the same technology two-headed statue not by accident it literally is supposed to be a two-headed statue from Jordan six and a half thousand BC now we've got some blades here this one's from France 22,000 BC and these ones look like they're made from jade and they're axes Neolithic from France 5,000 BC and then we've got some disc rings. Don't know what purpose they are, but they're also from France, 4000 BC. And one from China. Chinese ones, 2300 BC. It amazes me how some of this pottery, this is ranging from three and a half to 5000 BC, and they really, look like they could have been made yesterday and this one's from Central Asia the Oxus civilization that's about 2000 BC this little Egyptian figurine she's so tiny but the details amazing that's from Egypt 3000 BC amazing the Sumerian Kingdom of Iraq, 2000 BC. You can reach out and touch him, it's not behind glass, but I don't think I will. That's a steel in the name of Tutankhamun, Pharaoh of Egypt, 1327 BC. Amazing. French armour from 1000 BC. Looks like it'd be pretty uncomfortable to wear though. And the people were definitely smaller back then. That's Ramesses II, Pharaoh of Egypt. That's a large statue. I can't really get close to it to show you the scale. And the reason I cut you, the things are out in the open, but you don't dare touch them, is that there are security guards down there watching you, which is a good thing. Well, Ramesses has already lost his nose. Egyptian things are very, very impressive. Just amazing the, the little statue there, the details. 
incredible. And the, this is the first time I've ever seen hieroglyphs. Where I can actually, I'm looking straight at them. They are amazing and beautiful. That's a Sumerian figure. And that is a steel for Nazi or Nazi Muratash, King of Babylon. The very first Nazi. And if, you do, if you're going to get upset, I'm just reading the tablet. But I've looked at hieroglyphs and I've always thought, oh, you know, they're a, a basic art form. But when you see them in person, it, you realise that it wasn't their artistic ability that made them, they've made them that way on purpose. Like there, there's a, a beauty to them. And if you look at these other figures, also Egyptian, you can see that they had plenty of artistic ability. Hieroglyphs is a form of writing, but there was no shortage of things that they could sculpt. So I often wondered how they know so much about what happened in ancient Egypt, but when you see artifacts like this, it's pretty easy to see that they know from what they left behind. You can clearly see how they used to travel in their boats. And that hippopotamus, honestly, you could, it looks like something you could buy in a gift shop. It's glazed, but that's two, almost 2000 BC. When we hear Sphinx, we think of that one big monument in Egypt, but the Sphinx is actually the name of a mythical creature. Well, let's hope it was mythical. And with the body of a lion, wings of an eagle, and the, normally the face of a woman. It shows that uh, the strength and obviously flight. And the, the face of a woman. It's a mythical creature that um, it's not just that one big monument, but um, it's like a, I guess, like a dragon. Mosaics are not a new thing. So it's a Persian mosaic from 500 BC. Just, yeah, a number of bricks. Now I'm back with the amazing Greek things. We've got the helmet, obviously, and the amphora. You'd see a lot of these things in Greece, but these are very good examples. Obviously, nothing but, but the best when it's the Louvre Museum, 550 BC. My first Roman statue has been uh, sorted out by the census by looks of it. And yeah, apparently his head wasn't that important. It's an amazingly perfect statue. Athena. Of Athena, of Greece. And that's who Athens is named after. A Cretan, a Cretan princess lying down having a bit of a rest. The, uh, I'm not calling her a Cretan because she's not real smart. It's because she's from the island of Crete. He's our old friend Socrates. Bronze Chinese dragon. 450 BC. 500 BC, a Phoenician sarcophagus lid. Why have one sarcophagus lid in the museum when you can have two? Another Phoenician. And that's Cleopatra. Produced 30 BC. That's likely what she really looked like. Doesn't look much like Elizabeth Taylor at all. Of course, Cleopatra was Greek. Great Augustus, Caesar of Rome. Marble. Great detail. And this is Julia Flavia from around about 60, 70 BC. She was the daughter of Emperor Titus. I've met a few Tituses in my time. Never lend them money. They don't pay it back. I always find these things, these are glass goblets and they're four and five hundred BC and they've survived. Just amazing. No glass survived that long in my place. 
not when we're having a bit of a drinking session anyway. That's a Roman portrait of a man from 200 BC. As an Egyptian man. Just goes to show Egyptian men were always olive skinned. Unnamed Roman man dressed in his toga. Again from 150 BC. And looks like we've got Buddha way back between 1 and 300 BC. And here we have a Jewish relief, 3 to 600 BC from a place now known as Jordan. The Jewish were there with their candlesticks that long ago. A, a museum with a view. A very large black marble statue of the goddess Isis found in Italy, 138 BC. We're moving into AD times. It's the scenes from the life of St. Nicholas. It doesn't look like the Santa Claus that we know in today's times. I think the real St. Nicholas had a bit more of a hard time. Look at the Virgin Mary from France in Normandy, about 1500 AD. That's a Gothic Bible from the year 1250 to 1280 from France. That's an Egyptian rug from 1450. My grandmother had one about that age in her house. German book on astronomy from 1500. Help us grow, like, share and subscribe. That's a little bit of light reading. It's the history of Rome, written in French, from the year 1440. It's quite a thick book, quite a lot of history. Oil paintings from Germany, about 1520 being the year. Oil on wood. Beautiful angel. This is a uh, lion from either southern Italy or Spain, around about 1000 AD, made of bronze. So this is the Catholic form of the Virgin Mary and baby Jesus from Italy, around about 1480 AD. And then here is the Ethan, Eastern Orthodox version of the same. Virgin Mary with baby Jesus. Different style, different sides of the same church. I spotted this fine marble statue, thought immediately of Nike, but um, this is actually a Roman Mercury, and he's only from the year 1780. Beautiful marble statue. It's a Belgian interpretation of the Tower of Babel from Antwerp in 1595. And this is my first Rembrandt that I've ever seen. And it's pretty cool, but it's um, quite small. It's not very big. Amazing World Globe it was made in 1668. And it shows, albeit incomplete, Australia. And this is St John the Baptist. But it's probably mostly significant because it was painted by Leonardo da Vinci. First time I've ever seen something by Leonardo da Vinci in my own eyes. Darling, is this your first Rembrandt? Obviously. <laughs> Unless I've seen one before and didn't really pay attention. Well, there's not that many of them floating around. And that particular I've one... Been to other, I've been to other museums. Which one would have a Rembrandt that you've been to? Probably Tretikov Gallery in Moscow. 
Yeah, I don't think you'll have a Rembrandt, darling, no, but that one's called The Philosopher of Co in Contemplation. And that's the second Rembrandt part, painting I've ever seen in my life. Head of a young man, study of the figure of Christ. Rembrandt died in 1656. Beautiful, amazing. This is a painting 1684 by Luca Giordano in Naples. And that painting is of the scene of Christ removing the merchants from the temple. That's Jacob's dream, painted in Spain. In 1665 by Tholomew Esteban Murillo. All these statues were made in around 1683. Really quite amazing. That's a setup for an Ottoman soldier and his horse just for scale there's the security guard there there's a normal sized man the japanese armor coat of arms of the feudal lord nabashima yoshogi yoshiin if you're japanese you know who he is and this lady may should look familiar because that's Marie Antoinette. We don't want to uh, lose our head over that. It's a portrait painted of her while she still had her head on. And that's George Washington, painted in 1822 by Gilbert Stuart. And that uh, where Jacques Cartier discovers the St. Lawrence River, 1535. It's in Canada. I don't know if that's changed, but uh, my great, 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 great grandfather was a soldier whose uh, job was to keep the French under control in the St. Lawrence River in Canada. Oh, William, his name was. It's a very large painting. The plaque doesn't really give too much detail on it, but I would hazard a guess that's our friend Napoleon. He's got Egypt that he conquered in the background. And uh, I'm not sure who the mystical half-naked ladies are and that he's looking, but he's certainly got their, they've certainly got his attention. He's having a good look. That's called A Call to Arms. It's only in 1906 in France, but it's pretty spectacular. They can be moving into the realm of art now, more so than uh, historically significant pieces. And that is my first Monet, Claude Monet, painted in 1891. And that is my second Monet. And uh, it's not the camera, it's, it's like almost as if it's, it's overexposed, it's very white. And that's my first Renoir. The Cup of Chocolate. That's what it's called. Look at her wedding ring. And that is my first Cezanne. 1895. It's a little bit impressionist. I don't know if that's the right term, but it's not very lifelike. Georges Brach, 1907. Must admit, I don't know who that is. Very large bonds. Says it was cast in 2012. Artsy. It's another man with Monet, still alive, with a bag and garlic. I think garlic played a big role in art in 1862. And that's a Picasso, woman with a mandolin. 
1911. I can almost reach out and touch it, except I'm sure that man would cut my fingers off if I tried. Portrait of a Seated Woman, Pablo Picasso, in 1923. A couple of Picasso drawings of Yuri Gagarin. Yuri Gagarin was the first man in space. Obviously impressed Picasso. And of course the Louvre itself, the building is just amazing. It's this big, I don't know, bird's nesty style building. We're actually on the outside now. And uh, as soon as you walk out, even though it's night, you still feel the humidity hit you. It's not upsetting me at all. I'm finding it quite, quite comfortable, to tell you the truth. I don't mind a bit of humidity and warmth, especially after all that air conditioning. But, uh, yeah, it's an amazing place. Literally built on the water. And uh, everywhere you look, it's water and you've got the beautiful city lights now. Yeah. And if you so uh, felt like it, you could just go in and have a bit of a swim. There's the city lights in the background. So I really, really enjoyed the Louvre Museum, the uh, Abu Dhabi version. It's inspired me to go to the French one. What did you think of the uh, Louvre Museum, Abu Dhabi? I really liked it. I think it's really worth visiting. You'll see the arts of the famous painters, famous artists. So yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, well, the highlight for me was seeing, yeah, for the first time in my life, artwork by Leonardo da Vinci and Bourgain and Cezanne and, and uh, Monet and uh, Rembrandt. Oh, that Picasso, was amazing. Picasso, Kandinsky. yeah. Lots of other ones, yeah. and I think um, they all, or maybe most of them, are originals, well, not the copies. No, they're not copies, it's all original stuff. The French have collected a few things over the years, and um, they're sharing them, well, they're probably leasing them, I don't know. Or maybe this is owned by the French Museum, I don't know, but um, it's definitely connected to the Louvre in... It's not just a rip-off thing, it's connected to the Louvre in, in Paris for sure. So we'll be in Paris one day, and we'll be able to go and see the real other mm. Louvre. <laughs> but um, but also some of the old things, well, not the old things, but the ancient things like the Egyptian stuff. Well, that's the first Egyptian stuff I've actually seen. So yeah, yeah that was... so, so many different eras, and uh, they're just fascinating. I could easily go there again and mm. just and spend the whole day, make it from eight o'clock to eight o'clock sort of thing, and just you know sit down and have a break every now and again. But yeah. Amazing. Yeah, really good. Anyway, move on to our next adventure, eh? Sure.